Great. Um, welcome to another fun-filled adventure through Open Educational Week at Labor Text. Uh, this uh, discussion is going to be focusing on the new homework system that we've been building over the last half a year. Um, and unfortunately, I'm going to be handling the first half of this uh, discussion, and then I have to transition out in order to give another talk at another place. Uh, and then uh, Eric Keen, the primary programmer on this project, is going to be stepping up in order to be able to do the more hands-on presentation of things and handle questions and answers at that level. So uh, let's get things going here. <clears throat> uh, so uh, as with all my presentations, I like to start with the people who are responsible or the organizations that are responsible in order to ensure that we are able to generate what we're generating, what we're showing here. So the uh, what we've um, the homework system has been funded primarily through a grant from the Department of Education uh, and a grant from the California Education Learning Lab. Uh, but we've also received support from NSF uh, and uh, UC Davis, Merlot and other uh, campuses in order to be able to enable us to do what we are doing and what I'm showing here. So let's start with just a general overview of the LibreText project and our mission. Um, so we're implementing a community built built OER platform that is comprehensive and can be curated at multiple levels. And each one of these words, uh, the three C's here, are exceedingly important in order to define who we are. So when I say community, I basically mean you. I mean, everyone who's in academia, everyone who's in the OER community, everyone who has a desire in order to be able to push education forward uh, on this planet. Uh, and we're trying to facilitate a mechanism uh, in order to make that efficient in order to be able to move forward. Uh, uh, OER uh, has a varied set of definitions. So right now I'm just gonna use the term free or almost free. Uh, and then we can discuss later if people are interested in uh, other definitions. Comprehensive means that we follow a no gap, gap left behind policy, which basically indicates that we have a desire in order to uh, not focus on a specific field, but across all of academia. Um, and we also follow a no tech left behind policy, which means as emerging technologies become available, we embed it into our infrastructure. That's important because the homework system that we're talking about is essentially to capitalize on existing technologies in order to be able to uh, provide the infrastructure that we want to provide our students and faculty to adopt. And lastly, we want to be able to create uh, an infrastructure that has content that's curatable. Um, so with textbooks, that means you have curatable content. With homework system, that means you have curatable questions as you're able to come up, uh, update them and improve them as uh, uh, needed off of that. <clears throat> so the LibreText project has three primary facets off of that this, uh, I'd like to emphasize. One is the, the project as a construction platform um, and that uh, then there's uh, LibreText as a dissemination platform and LibreText as a learning platform. The construction platform is more for faculty in order to be able to capitalize on building resources for their classroom. The learning platform is focused on students in order to engage with the resources effectively and to be an effective learning uh, mechanism. Uh, and the dissemination is acting as a de facto uh, central infrastructure in order to be able to capitalize widespread adoption of the content either for construction or learning uh, off of that. So in order to be able to enable us uh, enable this process, uh, we have uh, established a, a ecosystem of resources in order to be able to um, uh, support the various features that we want to be able to push out. Uh, one is the core LibreText libraries and the content of the textbooks that are stored there. That's not going to be the topic of this uh, presentation. But then we have these ancillary uh, servers uh, that provide value added component on top of the textbooks. Um, and uh, those all constitute an ecosystem that we refer to as the Libreverse. And the ones that I'll be talking about today are essentially the homework infrastructure, the query and uh, adapt approaches, although we have other things here that are particularly necessary in order to empower the LibreText project. So let's start out with just a general question here. Uh, how do you build an online homework system that complements the utility of the LibreText infrastructure? Uh, uh, and you want it to be flexible, you want to be dynamic, you want to be comprehensive, you want to be integratable or integrated into existing systems. You want to be LMS agnostic because we don't want to be connected to a specific technology uh, out there and we want it to be powerful. I should also mention we want it to be free or nearly free uh, as allowed in order to be able to uh, run the system. So the underlying idea behind the LibreText project as a whole is not to recreate the wheel. Uh, if someone already has done a lot of work, then commandeer that 
if you can commandeer that uh, and use it effectively in order to be able to achieve your goals. And that's a guiding principle behind the ADAPT system. So the homework system we have actually has two components to it that I'll be bouncing back and forth uh, between here. One is the query system. Uh, and the query system you can actually access via this URL here. Um, and it acts as a central location for community assessments and the ability in order to be able to provide a gallery so that faculty and students can uh, can parse through available assessments. Um, it also provides an open problem uh, set in order to uh, enable formative and faculty problems that can be used for summative use, which is the other side of this, this coin. Uh, and these questions so that you can find on here, and we have about 100,000 questions already publicly available on our query library, uh, can be embedded directly into textbook pages. The key point here is that the questions in the query library and used directly from the query library are formative, meaning that they are not meant to be coupled into a uh, into a grade book uh, and we don't monitor individual students performance uh, and that's beneficial from a pedagogical perspective however many circumstances we want to be able to connect that to performance that we can track and that's where the adapt homework system comes in and the adapt uh, system can be found in adapt.libertex.org uh, but you need an account in order to be able to see the stuff underlying that and eric can will go into that in more detail after i'm done with this presentation so the adapt uh, infrastructure is the summative assessment application uh, it provides all the benefits uh, or features associated with the summative aspect which includes uh, uh, the ability in order to formulate assignments consisting of multiple assessments connecting to a grade book the timing uh, and grading and all the other appropriate aspects of that. The key aspect is that uh, we want to design this to be flexible. So it's able to operate uh, in an auto-graded form. We're using technology to do real-time grading or open-ended questions for questions that are not well-suited for online grading. For example, write an essay on something or prove something or something that requires a bit more flexibility than current online technology is able to do for grading. Um, we also have that expanded in order to handle things like foreign languages for people to make audio recordings in order to be able to have that submitted for delayed or open-ended uh, evaluation. We also have uh, implemented adaptive learning uh, into our infrastructure uh, uh, and uh, are building uh, an infrastructure in order to facilitate culturally responsive pedagogy into uh, the ADAPT uh, thing. The ADAPT system is also uh, capable in order to be used as a centralized system for in-class clicker infrastructure um, so that upon adoption, then everyone, uh, every student in the class has automatic uh, access to that. You can fold it into doing uh, student analytics and surveys and also uh, you can make it integrated into books in order to be able to generate what I refer to as the textbook of the future or to be able to use uh, as laboratory reports, for example. So the concept behind the uh, uh, the ADAPT infrastructure as whole is uh, the concept of ad abstraction layers. And abstraction layers actually underlies the whole concept of the LibreText project as a whole. And this is a general overview of an abstraction layer. Uh, so if you imagine you have a clientele of three students and two faculty, uh, off of it, and you have a range of different resources uh, out there, OER uh, resources, <coughs> Um, you have a whole range of different potential interactions between different members of your uh, cohort and different resources that are available. Uh, and this sort of infrastructure provides what I, uh, or, or enables uh, what I argue is the fragmentation of the OER infrastructure. What we are doing uh, as a LibreText is to generate a de facto um, uh, abstraction layer, which basically acts as an intermediary between the students and faculty and cohorts that want to use OER and the primary OER repositories of content that's out there. This oftentimes in different formats and different structures off of the case, so that faculty and students can access directly a single source, the abstraction layer, that on the back end uh, grabs the content and uh, integrates it into the system. That's the fundamental aspect of the harvesting effort, the term that we use in order to argue for integrating existing content into the LibreText libraries for textbook. This same concept is essentially utilized uh, in the construction of the ADAPT and the uh, query infrastructure. Uh, that is building an abstraction layer and avoiding complications associated with the unique aspects of different homework infrastructures. Um, 
So the key point here is, again, not to reproduce the wheel. We want to commandeer existing technologies in order to be able to suit our goals. And there are three primary technologies that we've targeted, but we've developed the system in order to enable us to implement uh, and integrate more technologies into the system conveniently. So web work is one of the infrastructures that we've used and it's uh, one of our more favorite technologies out there because of its flexibility and power. Um, and that uh, was started 25 years ago. Um, and it's largely a server side evaluation infrastructure. It's very popular for upper divisional math classes. Uh, uh, IMath AS is a technology that was ported from web work uh, that was uh, by David Lipman. Uh, and it is uh, used uh, very similarly to web work, uh, but its applicability has largely been focused on lower divisional classes and is actually quite popular in the community colleges um, out there. It's also server side evaluation, um, which means that both of these are server side evaluation techniques gives us the ability to control the evaluation uh, away from the computer uh, that the student happens to be on. And that's important for integrity basis. H5P has gotten popular over the last couple of years. And it's the third of the technologies that we've integrated here. Um, and it's a free and open source uh, framework that's based off of JavaScript uh, and HTML5 capabilities. In contrast to the other two technologies, it's, it's client side evaluation, which basically means the computer that the student is at is the computer that's used in order to evaluate if the question is right and wrong. And there are benefits and detractions off of that. Uh, it's simple in order to implement the server side, but it's easily hackable. Um, so it's not really a great technology to be used uh, for um, high stakes homework infrastructure. Um, uh, <clears throat> we have other technologies that we are looking into implementing, including uh, organic chemistry approaches, which need chem informatics, a Jupyter notebook system for executable code, and a range of other things that uh, we feel are important in order to satisfy these things. So um, this is the point uh, behind the abstraction layer is each one of these technologies that I mentioned here has a whole set of components in order to be able to make it successful. You have a, a mechanism to build problems, a, a mechanism to store those problems, a mechanism to search those problems, a mechanism in order to deliver or render those problems, a mechanism to check those problems, a grade book that's associated with that, and oftentimes an interface to a learning management systems. And each one of these technologies is different. Uh, and that's one of the issues that you have uh, with trying to build an infrastructure like we are doing that's a composite of different technologies is that we want these different technologies to be implemented in order to address uh, different fields because one technology doesn't work for every field. However, every technology has all this additional infrastructure. What we are doing is we are taking these things and gutting everything but the actual important component in order to be able to operate within the adapt system. So for example, we have a centralized problem library, which is the query system. We have a centralized search capability in order to traverse that. We have a centralized grade book. We have a centralized learning management uh, system uh, interface. So that once it's centralized, then it's the unique features associated with how each of the technologies are implemented is hidden behind the scenes. And a faculty member can pick the problem that they want in order to be able to handle the question that they want to address without having to worry about what are the details behind the technologies in order to implement them. We feel that this is the flexible way in order to move forward uh, and an exceedingly powerful way in order to move forward. Um, so um, this is a, uh, the general overview of how the technology or the infrastructure uh, sort of um, house of cards uh, that we've constructed and multiple servers put together. We have servers running each of these technologies individually. These technologies don't talk to each other very well or at all. Um, they have different code base. They have a variety of different mechanisms. So they are meant to run independently. We have the problems from these things stored in our query library. And you can review over 100,000 problems in query.libretext.org uh, right now. Uh, I'm going down. You can embed those questions formatively into your textbook into your Libre text uh, book quite easily, just with a press of the button and it's embedded and it's ready to go. However, the ADAPT system is another layer that acts on top of the query system and these other servers in order to couple the questions into the grade book, into a centralized organization in order to couple into learning management systems and all the things that we have stripped away from these technologies in order to be effective. We can also embed those questions directly into the textbook, but now those are, uh, 
summative questions and not formative questions. So a student logs in in order to be able to track their performance. The idea behind that is to make the textbook of the future means that you need the textbook to be interactive. And this is one of the primary mechanisms in order to make that interactive. And lastly, you can couple adapt directly into your learning management system, uh, either via LTI um, uh, mechanisms or um, uh, modular based approaches uh, or even just downloading CSV files in order to be able to do that. And you can embed the questions or pages from textbooks directly into your learning management system as modules, which we already have established via common cartridge, for example. So this is an overview of the query library. Uh, it's set up, uh, actually, this is not the most up-to-date version. It's set up with three primary components, the public facing uh, a section that's dedicated to anyone who be, is able to access it, a section dedicated to only faculty members in order to be able to access it, so you can actually maintain the integrity of the question. Um, think of how CHEG has actually had a profound effect in terms of releasing information to students that we oftentimes don't uh, in the, the current COVID situation. Uh, and lastly, we have a private section where faculty can construct their own problems and store them without having to share it with anybody um, uh, out there. And there are people who maintain this sort of integrity requirement off of that. We are building a search infrastructure across the entire library so you can actually do a search and find questions irrespective of the technologies that are out there. Uh, this is a snippet from WebWorks centralized uh, capability that we are uh, looking at in order to be able to implement what we're doing. But you can select different fields, you can select the licensing and everything, all the meta tags associated with maintaining and, and hosting the content here across the technologies are enabled by this capability. So here's a snippet of uh, the, uh, the query system for my general chemistry class, the class I'm actually teaching this quarter. Uh, and what you can see here is just a handful of assignments that are in this course, uh, and within each assignment consists of multiple assessments. Uh, those assessments can actually vary in type. Uh, they can either be automatic grading or delayed grading um, or real t or um, open-ended grading. You could submit uh, automatically with text files, with PDFs, with images, uh, or even with audio uh, for, which is useful for foreign languages. Um, ADAPT has a system on it in order to be able to implement adaptive learning trees. Uh, <clears throat> and the idea behind adaptive learning trees is to be able to construct topologies uh, that are able to act as a, a virtual tutor to guide students if they get a question wrong in order to get the assessment that you have available. The key point here is that this, these are very flexible so you can create learning trees and share them amongst people. Uh, in order to identify what is a good learning tree and what is a bad learning tree. And that flexibility we think is exceedingly powerful in order to be able to enable widespread adoption of uh, adaptive learning on our infrastructure in contrast to building a more static infrastructure like what Alex does with their uh, learning tree infrastructure. Here's an example of uh, an assessment. This is an H5P assessment that's embedding, embedded into uh, the homework system. Um, uh, and we are expanding that by introducing uh, the culturally responsive pedagogy. For example, here is a bigger picture uh, sidebar or annotation that's meant in order to emphasize uh, a context behind the question to um, a particular issue for disadvantaged students, in this case here for um, marginalized female scientists that deserve the credit, uh, actually deserve a Nobel Prize in this case here. Uh, for here. <coughs> um, we have a simplified GUI interface in order to build uh, learning trees. Uh, the uh, And Eric, who's going to be stepping up here in a handful of minutes, uh, will be showing you uh, how we actually go about doing that. The key point is that we construct a, uh, a gallery of nodes that consist of either assessments as problems or remediation or tutoring aspects in order to be able to guide the students if they get something wrong they can go into a certain pathway to address a learning objective or to have a simpler question start to deal with uh, tutoring issues that may be socratic maybe a video maybe a worked out problem there's a range of different pedagogies that you can implement in the learning trees uh, and we have mechanisms in place or will be in place in order to do an analytical evaluation of the efficacy of those learning trees. So let me end uh, with uh, what I started with, which is the uh, mission statement for the LibreText. We're implementing a community built OER platform that's comprehensive and can be curated at multiple levels. That applies not only to just the homework, sorry, not only just to the textbook infrastructure, but also to the homework system, which complements uh, or is at least a major component of this Libreverse ecosystem and important in order to be able to enable us to uh, uh, achieve our goals. 
with that, that is an overview of the, uh, the homework system. Eric, who's not on here yet, but will be on here momentarily, will be able to step up and handle a handful of questions. I unfortunately have to leave because I double booked two talks and I need to go to a second talk right now. Um, but feel free to ask me any questions and I can certainly address them uh, as needed. Um, so uh, Eric should be here in a couple minutes. Uh, a, feel free to ask questions online. Jennifer and uh, actually Jennifer is, is only is here. Uh, she's able to uh, to address them. And if the, not to your satisfaction, please let me know, and I can certainly address that. I have time for one question. If anyone has something quick before Eric I jump showed up, Delmar. Eric did show up. Yeah, so Great, here. Eric. This is all you. Uh, uh, Oh, you're not even here. I can just see you, but like, uh, okay. That's Eric in the upper right-hand corner, upper left-hand corner, depending upon where you are. Uh, and he is the master behind uh, Adapt, and he's able to give you all the finer details on how to use it and the power behind it. With that, I'm going to step off in order to handle a different talk. I thank you for your attention uh, and have a good day. As soon as I figure out how to get out of here. You can just hit leave. I'm gone. Okay. Bye, Delmar. Uh, Eric, could you unmute yourself? There you are. All right. So um, it is good to be here. Sorry, I'm a little going to get a little organized here. I just finished teaching a calculus class. Um, so uh, just a little bit about me uh, briefly. So I teach uh, mathematics and I also teach the viola um, at Western Washington University, um, which is in Bellingham, Washington. Has anybody here heard of either? Yes, no? I have. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, and uh, not only that, about um, 10 years ago, I started um, getting involved in uh, programming. Uh, I won't go through the whole, uh, um, hi history of things, but long story short is um, I just became interested in trying to trying to figure out how to um, make um, uh, textbooks and homework um, uh, assessment systems less expensive for students, and that just uh, brought me on a journey, uh, which led me to Del Mar. Um, uh, about nine months ago or so. So um, I became involved in the project at that point. And um, my role in the project uh, was to create the um, assessment system known as ADAPT. So uh, what I wanted to do today was to um, walk everybody through um, some of the different components of ADAPT. And you're welcome to stop me whenever, uh, if you have a question, you can either unmute yourself, there's only 15 or so of us, um, or just throw a question in the um, chat and um, I'd be happy to um, answer. So um, the first thing that I wanna do is, get my little list of things I wanna do. Okay, so first thing I wanna talk about is, um, how you would uh, create a course and adapt, uh, uh, how you create a course and adapt. Um, and sorry, I need to get this started. Actually, while that's loading, I can. This is what happens when I have zero downtime between activities. Okay, so I'm, I'm basically getting my uh, files loaded up. How do we get, okay, great, great question. Um, so I emailed the system email, but got no reply. So I'm, yeah, I'm actually the system email person. <laughs> so when you say, uh, when you say the system. Hi, hi yeah. this is Virginia. I, hi. I, 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 um, I saw you on a, I went, I came across a video on YouTube where you, you know, you, you introduced ADAPT. So it said to email info at libretext.org. And um, that's what I email asking for access because they said everybody can have access, you just have to request it. But I did not get a reply. I emailed back Wednesday. You know, that would have, if you sent it to the info at, that would have been um, Delmar. Um, if you so, and he's usually really, really good about um, uh, 
uh, getting people set up um, in that way. Jennifer, um, so I'm meeting you for the first time. I'm going to put my email in the chat here. Awesome. Delmar gets extraordinarily uh, overwhelmed with absolutely everything. Oh, yeah. So if, one more. <laughs> if you uh, email me, I can poke him. So my email is in the chat. And basically, what will happen is um, we have um, access codes for instructors. And uh, once you are given an access code, then you can um, sign up for an account. So it's 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 super easy. Um, and yes, he is uh, um, he's he's super good about returning emails, but I know he is um, beyond swamped right now. So um, so just take one more second. Any other questions before uh, we officially start? Yeah. Okay. So um, let me log in here. Okay, so this is what the um, adapt um, interface looks like uh, when you log in. And again, the first thing that I want to do is um, start by creating a course for everybody. So you can see what that looks like. So yeah, that this is um, so what you would do is you just put a course name, so some course. Um, put in your dates. And then this public um, um, key here is as follows. If you make the course public, then that means that other instructors could um, import your course. Um, if you don't make it public, then you're the only one who can import a course. So let's say you create a course now with all of your assignments, um, and now it's next quarter or next semester. You don't want to you know, do all that again. We have a course import functionality. Um, if you make it public, um, and if you want one of your colleagues to have access to it so that they can import um, all of the assignments, then that would uh, uh, work that way. Okay, so I've now just created a new course. And um, once I create a course, so some new course, um, you can start adding assignments to it. So some new assignment. I'm going to come up with good names for these. Um, available due dates. So this is when your students would be able to um, see them and when it's actually going to be due. And then we have a built-in um, uh, gradebook. So the assignment group is going to help later on in determining uh, the scores. So we have a weighting system that you can implement. So if you want labs to be 10%, um, then this would be part of that um, group. The source, can you change the course setting from private to public? Yep, you can always change your mind um, uh, at a later time. We have a, a course properties area. Um, and you can just um, update that uh, whenever you'd like. Um, the types of questions that we have are internal and you're welcome, internal and um, external. So internal just means that the questions are coming from ADAPT. Um, so they could be a web work type question, it can be H5P. Um, I, I'm not sure how much people know about the lingo, but basically that we have certain technologies already as a part of ADAPT. Um, then we have uh, you can make it external. So if you wanted to make it external, um, sorry, if you wanted, if you want to make it external, then what that means is that um, you actually create the questions externally and then um, you just input the grade into the system. So sorry, now I really wanted to show this on my local machine. So let's take a look. One more time here. Okay, so again, I chose my assignment group. So for example, let's say you wanna have a discussion and you not, don't actually want questions associated with it, but you want them to have um, a grade, then it would be um, an external type um, assignment. 
Um, we then have different scoring types. So you can either do it for performance. So this would actually, uh, with the automatically graded H5P, web work, et cetera, they would get um, a score based on if they actually answered the question correctly. Uh, you can also do it for completion. So for completion, that just means, hey, did they actually just you know, click submit? And then they would get credit for that. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, Brian is our uh, one of our power users because he's uh, one of the people piloting it. Um, and uh, he has a really interesting use case. He actually embedded all of the ADAPT assessments into a textbook. So the students are answering questions in their textbook, in their Libre text, and the grades are going back to the gradebook. So um, he'll show you something that, that'll be, um, I think, very interesting. Um, in terms of assessment types, um, we have real-time graded, which means that um, as soon as the student submits, they see if they got it right or wrong, they know the score, they can see the solution. Um, a delayed grading um, is when um, you have something that you don't want them to see the score right away, or you might have some type of um, file upload or text upload or audio upload, and I'll go through those later, that um, you, uh, uh, want to grade at a later date. So that's what's meant by delayed grading. Learning tree assessments, um, that's a very special type of assessment. And I'll go into detail about this later. Uh, the idea is that the student answers or tries to answer a question. If they get the question wrong, then they have some remediations. So maybe they have access to a video or maybe they have access to um, a text um, bit to help explain the concept, and then they can try it again. And then finally, clicker assessments. Um, we have a built-in clicker system here. Uh, I'll show you that in a video so you can um, see how that works. Um, but basically, this is just like a regular clicker system where the instructor um, you know, has the question set up, uh, the students answer them, and the instructor sees in real time how the class is doing. So it's a great way to um, promote um, discussion. Uh, Late policies, we don't need to go through that, but different options there, um, et cetera, et cetera. All right, are there any questions on um, creating an assignment before we then um, start digging deeper? No? Okay. Um, so once we have um, an assignment, oh, overall, would you say that this is much harder or more technical in homework platforms offered by uh, commercial publishers, many of our faculty have adopted my open math and I'm trying to promote options that are roughly as easy as commercial homework um, platforms. So, um, you know, this is, uh, this is one of those questions that I think that um, you'll, you'll have to answer for yourself. Um, I feel like it is, I mean, again, I, I teach, I've used Canvas, I've used Blackboard. Um, Delmar and I have tried really hard to make this as intuitive as possible. Um, We've also tried to make it as flexible as possible. With flexibility comes, um, you know, I hate to use the word complexity, but you know, that's that's the the truth of the matter. But you know, if you're someone who's like, yes, I, I want to use this, I know I'm always going to be used. You don't need to use every single feature that we have here. And you might be thinking, oh gosh, I'm totally going to use this just for real time graded. It's the same step every time. Um, I, I I think it's. Um, uh, uh, straightforward and intuitive to use. Um, and with that said, you know, with these, uh, with the initial users, we love feedback. I love improving this. Um, Brian's given a lot of great feedback. Um, Delmar's grader has given a lot of great feedback. Delmar's always given feedback. Um, and I'm always looking at it and thinking, huh, how could we make this easier to use? Um, so technically, I would definitely not say it's uh, more difficult than anything um, commercial, personally. Yeah, you're most welcome. Okay, so um, once we have uh, an assignment, um, and I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna go through all these options here, but you know, you can show solutions, show scores, hide scores, um, give statistics, all that, all that sort of thing. Um, I, I here, could you answer yeah. um, this uh, question from Giovanni about using it as a standalone platform? Oh, I'm sorry. Can this home system be worked uh, used as a standalone platform for homework without having a textbook on LibreText? Yes, you can. Um, so basically, the way, I'll, um, this will make more sense when I start showing how you are um, getting questions. Um, 
but you don't need to have a Libre text at all. Uh, the way the questions are um, created, the, um, so Delmar talked about the query system. There, there's a tie-in there, but uh, it's it's not a textbook. It's just um, it's part of the let's call it part of the Libreverse. But you don't don't need to have an entire textbook. You can just have um, uh, your own um, homework questions. The use case with Brian, uh, who um, does have a Libre text, is that hey, if you do have a Libre text. Um, it could be cool to actually you know, embed um, the questions. But with that said, we have an ability um, to create iframes. And again, I don't know um, what people here know or don't know, but long story short is you can embed questions wherever you want. So it doesn't need to be a Libre text. And is it possible to have multiple sections per course? Um, I feel like my ears are burning because I literally started working on that code today. So today, no, <laughs> very soon, yes. So we're actually at the point where um, the platform's pretty mature. Uh, what we're now starting to think about is, you know, multiple instructors, multiple sections, all of that, all of that stuff. Um, so that's where we are in uh, the development. All right. So um, so uh, once I have my um, created. Oops. Uh, once I have my um, assignment, then I add assessments. And I, I add an assessment um, already, but let me just show you the process of um, how that works. So uh, basically what happens, basically what happens is we have um, this query, we have libraries. So the query library um, is a library that Dumar talked about. Is this is everybody familiar with the, with the concept? Yes, no. Yes. Okay. Cool. So the query library is is where these questions are um, housed, and you can then search by query ID. So you have a page ID associated with each question, and then you can import it. Um, into the platform. Um, another way, I'm going to do it this way just because I don't have any IDs off the top of my head, um, is we have a tagging system. So this is something called an H5P type question. Um, it happens to be a Spanish question, and uh, then I add it. So uh, this assessment now actually has um, two questions set up. It had the um, question that I had a second ago. Um, and then it has um, this question. And um, here are the two questions. And um, you can, uh, again, flexibility. You can just have them have some sort of multiple choice or drag and drop or whatever, and the system automatically grades it. Or what I did in this one is I also, I made this what's called an um, open-ended type question. And with the open-ended type questions, what that means is that the students not only can submit um, the you know, automatically graded one, but as part of the process, you might ask them to submit text. So I have no idea por qué hablo español or something like that. No hablo muy bien. And then when they submit this, so, okay, so the, the, the assignment hasn't been released yet. When they submit it, if it were actually available, then the text submission information would go here, and then a grader would grade it <laughs> later. Muchas gracias. <laughs> All right, I actually do speak Spanish, but, <laughs> um, or at least I fake Spanish. Um, so speaking of, of, of language though, since uh, we do have a Spanish professor um, here. So again, you can have the students either do the automated grading you can have them do the um, text. Um, you can have them do a file upload. But another really cool one, especially for the language folks, is um, audio. So with the um, audio scenario, let's load up again. And I, I have to say, I apologize for these really slow page loads. It's because of Zoom. I'm, I'm really offended by how slowly this loads, but the pages normally load in about two seconds. Um, 
So anyway, students can record something. So you could have them, uh, if you are someone who teaches Spanish, you can have them answer these and then they can do recording, uh, which again, you can listen to later on. This is one of those delayed type problems. So what file, type, what file types can students upload? Um, so right now they can upload um, uh, PDFs, um, they can upload PNGs, but here's a great example of, um, you know, we're not a, a commercial enterprise. We're, we're here to, uh, commercial enterprise would be, you know, if a professor wrote and said, hey, I need this type of file, uh, uh, commercial enterprise would say, okay, great. We'll have that done in, you know, three years, whatever. We're very nimble, <laughs> we're very quick. You know, if you want um, an you know, Excel upload or, or something like that, then um, you should just talk to Delmar. Delmar will talk to me and uh, we'll make it happen. So um, hopefully that, that helps with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So right now, you know, this is, you know, for me, it's super exciting because this is the ground level. And um, uh, we're, we're, we're basically going on what Delmar's needs are for his chemistry class. Um, and what Brian's needs are for his course. There's another chemistry professor teaching um, who asked for a couple of things. And as more people use it, that's when we um, will continue to um, build it out. Um, so hopefully that, that helps. Um, so that's the main concept in terms of um, uh, adding questions. Um, now I wanna show you a couple of uh, videos. One of, the, um, one of the assessment types, again, was this learning tree concept. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit in this, but uh, uh, the idea is as follows. Again, if a student gets a question wrong, then you want to give them some sort of guidance. And that's what the learning tree does. Interesting. So I'm muttering there, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna speak over it. So here the student got a question wrong. They didn't get any points for it. And then as it says down here, you didn't answer the question correctly, explore the learning tree and you can try again. Points message here. Do contact information here and do information to the students. Okay, so this is the learning tree that pops up. So the top exercise 2.1a, that's the initial question. Then they have these remediations, um, which will hopefully have information that will help them with the distributive property. Wait a couple of seconds. Explore the learning tree. Okay, so this time up here is saying that um, once you once the student has explored the learning tree for it could be a minute, it could be two minutes, it's up to you. Um, I just did it for ten seconds for this uh, the sake of the um, you know not, not making you wait here. But once they've studied the material again, they can try it again. <laughs> So let me get it wrong once again. Um, if they get it wrong again, they still get a point mm -hmm. because they have explored the learning tree. Um, so we're giving them points for at least trying and you have total control over how many points you want them to get. So I'm giving them 10% uh, for that. The penalty, the maximum score that I can get is nine points. Okay. Eric, can you uh, speak to when this is going yes. live for people? I speak to, I'm sorry? Uh, when this is going to be uh, live for other people to pilot. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. Thank you. Um, let me just finish this up uh, really quickly. So um, here, what happened is the, the student finally got it right, but they get a penalty of 10% because they tried, you know, 15 million times. So the bottom line is with the learning tree type concept, um, what you're doing is you're um, having them answer a question. If they get it right, they're none the wiser. If they get it wrong, you're offering them some guidance in terms of material that, that could help them um, uh, better understand. And they get points for exploring the learning tree. You have total control over how many. Then they get points if they actually get it correct. Um, and they have um, a couple of tries before they're even, even penalized. So that's, that's part of the adapt and adapt. It's adaptive in that sense. Um, so that's the learning tree um, concept. And then I saw an earlier from Stephanie, an earlier pilot programs going on. Is, is this live for us to develop for fall courses? It is, yeah. It's, you just need to talk to um, Delmar um, about getting that instructor code. And then everything that I'm showing you is actually um, you know, live on the ADAPT um, platform. 
All right, does anybody have any questions on the, the learning tree um, concept? Um, let me show you one more thing about that. You might be wondering, well, how, do, how the heck do I make one of those learning trees? And again, we're trying to make things um, as easy as possible. And I think I'm in student mode. Yes. Oops. Let me log out. Log back in. Okay. So um, when you log in, you'll when you're on the courses page, you'll see my learning trees. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to just create a new learning tree. Um, so of course, this is boring. Some new tree, great description. And then again, this ties back to the libraries. So you're literally picking um, a page in the library. And um, I have a page here. It, the system double checks that it's a valid page. Okay, so this is query with page ID 93565. And this number down here is whoever created that page, use that as the description. And of course you can create something uh, more descriptive. So that's the basic question. So that's the, the root. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create um, the remediations. Again, the idea behind the remediation is that's what the student can see if they get it wrong. So um, these are different pages, once again, in the Lee reverse, just drag it over. And just so I don't have to look up a different um, page ID, I'm gonna do it again. You'd never put the same one because that wouldn't quite make sense. But this is now the tree from the instructor perspective. So you can actually see um, your root and you can see the two questions. Again, with the student view, they saw the, the, the information over to the right. And then if they would have clicked on this guy here, that would have brought them to that remediation. They clicked on this guy here, that would have been that remediation. And again, this was the initial question. All right, and then another um, feature, I have two more things that I'd like to show you. One is the um, clicker concept. Whoops, I think I left off an H there. Okay, so what I've done here is I've opened up two different uh, windows. The window on the right, the lighter colored one, that's the student. The window on the left is the instructor. So the instructor hasn't started the, the clicker um, assignment yet. The student is hanging out, waiting, and this is what happens. The um, instructor says how much time they'll have to answer the questions and clicks go. And then the student will automatically be directed to that question. So you'll see they have eight seconds left. They've answered the question and automatically back in the instructor side, they see the results. So um, half of the students have responded. You're told the correct answer and you can see what they have responded. So this could be really interesting uh, um, jump off for discussion because the instructor seeing in real time how the students are responding. So let's say, you know, 10% of the students are getting it correct. The instructor could say, hey, you might need to think about this. And then you could actually see if that has an impact on, on how students are, are answering. So uh, the 10 seconds are now over. And now, uh, I'm sorry, 10 seconds aren't over yet. Now they're over. So the student is not allowed to submit anymore. And when the instructor goes to another page in this clicker assignment and clicks go again, you'll see that the student is automatically redirected. Didn't do anything. Automatically re redirected to that page and then they submit. And then once again, the um, statistics are automatically um, thrown back to the instructor. So that's the um, clicker. Um, any questions on that? Okay, um, the final thing that I wanna show you is the uh, grading. And let me see if I'm logged in. I may need to log in, but let's see what happens. 
Okay, so I'm logged in. So uh, remember we talked about that you can have, um, you can have file uploads, you can have audio uploads, um, and you can also have text uploads. So I created a bogus um, assignment. So this um, course happens to have two students in it, fake student um, and me, student Keen. Um, and I'll do this. Oh, I thought I had this. Oh, I do have this. Okay. So um, for this one, question two, student one, the fake student actually submitted something. So this is what the, the grading, um, uh, this is what the grading page uh, will look like. So what you see down here is the submission of the student. So this happened to be a text type upload. So they just type the word better and this is what they submitted. Um, you then, you can enter the score here. Um, it will be um, changed here. You can give them comments, which they can see. You can upload feedback as well. So you can upload currently PDF, um, PNG, JPEG, or text. We're again thinking of the language folks. You can actually upload um, an audio file um, so you can respond to whatever they said, um, and then they'll have access to that uh, when they are um, uh, back in their assignment view. So we've tried to make this as uh, simple as possible. So if you can imagine, you know, you have um, uh, 30 students or 40 students, you'll just see the numbers here and you can just click through. So if you have, you know, 40 students, and if you have a grader, or if you're like me and you don't have a grader, um, you can answer the same question over and over and over again. Um, it's way easier, I think, than how I'm doing it on Canvas right now. So for example, I just gave a calculus exam. Um, I go through the whole exam per student. It's way easier if I'm just doing the same question 30 times personally, um, because I don't, have to, I don't have to think so hard. Um, and in addition, I'll see the um, common errors, uh, which um, you know, I might forget if I'm looking at the um, entire page. Uh, are there any questions on that? All right, well, I, that is pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Um, I'd love to open the floor to um, questions or even just thoughts or comments um, uh, to anybody out there. So uh, anybody have any thoughts or questions? No? Um, let's see, can you upload? So what is a, I, I, don't, I don't even know what a, oh, a web work file. So we can't upload web work files um, at the moment. Web work is also hot off the press. Uh, Delmar it plans on using it um, next quarter. Um, Can I show you how to embed quite? I'm gonna leave that to, you're welcome, Mariana. I'm gonna leave that to Brian, if that's okay. Um, he's the pro at that, um, since he, that like, uh, that's what he does all the time. But I can show you that um, basically what you would need to do. Um, so I, I, I don't have like a, a book prepared, so I think it would, it would be a little bit tougher for me, but I wanna show you uh, I want to show you the process. Basically, you just go to a question, click on share, and um, you literally just click copy. You copy an, an iframe. And again, I don't want to insult anyone here, but I don't know how much people know about um, computers. An iframe is just something that you can embed into another um, uh, uh, website. So you just copy that code. The code's given for the question, and then you paste it in. And basically, the, the secret sauce is this number represents the question ID in our system, and this represents the assignment number in our system. So it makes sure that only students who are, are enrolled in that course can access that. And then it also makes sure that um, whatever score they get gets correctly passed back to our gradebook. Um, hopefully that helped. Um, in terms of the, the web work, um, situation. I know Delmar uh, uh, is planning on 
Um, we, we've been, we're in testing mode. He's planning on using it uh, with his course, which has 500 students um, next quarter. Um, so that would be the first time that it's uh, used in the wild. And um, I don't know people's time frames, but you know, definitely by fall, the web work is going to be completely fleshed out because it's going to have gone through um, a complete iteration with a lot of students. Um, and if the, uh, I don't know that much about uh, web work in terms of the, um, uh, the files, uh, how they would be, uh, uh, actually, Mar Mariana, are you, are you still here? Yes, I'm here. Hi. So, um, could do you have a? Is there a way to explain how the the um, how those files like what what would I do with them as like you upload them and what, and what what would you hope to happen? I guess. So the way we um, are using Weber currently. Um, so I'm by the way I'm the community manager for the Weber project, which is why oh, I'm asking oh, all these I was, I was related like, questions. You know what, I, I, I was thinking, I feel like I've seen your name in email. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen me around. I'm kind of lurking and I like to poke people. Good um, to meet you. <laughs> thank you. And we have some of our, we have Andrew Parker, our City Tech Weber guru, also on the phone. And then we have, it looks like Ramon and Virginia and Suman, who are the CUNY Weber fellows, um, also on the line. So, um, uh, Ramon and Suman and and a couple of other uh, and myself and other people we're working on embedding web questions into our Libra text which we're pulling together right now so we're really excited about this cool. um, and we're asking about the web courses because currently how we kind of share our web courses with each other um, is by we archive the course within um, the legacy web platform okay. um, so it creates a TGZ file, mm -hmm. um, and then that TGC, TGZ file we can share with one another. And when you upload it into traditional web work, it unpacks itself to kind of, it gives all of the homework assignments are there. And you can kind of go in and ingest the due dates and these kinds of things. Um, and we do know that with other platforms that are web work compatible, um, you should be able to upload a TGZ file or a DEF file for one specific set instead of just the whole course. Um, so there should be that kind of compatibility. And I guess we'll talk if it's, I was just asking if you, if it was on your radar, if it's not, then maybe we can talk to Del Mar and kind of get something like this fleshed out because I know a lot of um, CUNY folks would mm -hmm. be interested in maybe piloting the ADAPT system if we could easily port our courses right in because they're already set up and ready to go. Um, totally. So that would be amazing functionality for us. I let's put it this way: if it's if it's done elsewhere, I see no reason why we can't do it. Um, and um, that's that's Delmar's attitude, and that, <laughs> that's it. fantastic. <laughs> um, so it, it would just be a question of talking with. So have, are, have you interacted with Henry at all? Or yeah, okay, we have. Okay, so Henry, myself, Delmar, and you would just have to. Have, uh, talk about the pieces, uh, you know, I, I imagine on my side, it would be, you know, the upload, the unpack, and then throw into the database. That, that, would, that would be my, uh, my end of things. Yep. And I'd probably have to communicate with you and Henry in terms of um, just understanding what things are looking like uh, so that um, uh, when I do the unpacking, um, things go to the correct courses, uh, to, to the correct courses, et cetera, et cetera, based on whatever metadata is in the files. But yeah, I, I, you know, um, you're not asking me to like create some sort of, you know, 4D model. <laughs> so no, yeah, no. I think but it's it, might, <laughs> it might be a little tricky, as Andrew Parker is pointing out that, um, you know, the web work problems in the the Open Problem Library they go by file path. They're referenced by file path, and right. they do have certain metadata <laughs> attached to them, but. Your ID system is different than the Weber problem library system. So we would have to figure that out. Um, another thing we would have to figure out are like image assets. So if you have a problem which has an image asset associated with it, that PG file, we would have to figure out how to handle the image assets. And if there are like broken link, you know, broken file paths, how do we handle that? And then if there's private content that we archive and want to pass over and it's not in the open problem library, what do we do with it? But it seems like you guys have a system in place for handling private content. So, you know. Yeah. This to me, it, this sounds like like everything you said, it just sounds like like nothing, nothing's scaring me. It just sounds like details. Yeah. We just got to work Just details that would have to be worked out, exactly. And, and but, let's put it this way, like 
Um, I, I think that for, look, we, we all know this, we, we all like to, uh, you know, path of least resistance. So if, if I'm gonna have to go into some other platform, manually input all my questions, I don't care if it's free, I'm not gonna do it. You know, even if you're, or whatever, low cost, you're, you're not gonna do it. So, you know, this sounds like one of those functionalities that, you know, we just have, we have to um, make it happen. So, um, yeah. Thank you, much yeah, appreciated. Yeah. I'm sure we'll talk more about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, any other questions? No, okay, cool. Well, um, it was good to um, meet everyone here or at least see your pictures and your names. <laughs> um, and if you have uh, you know, further questions, <laughs> good to meet you, Andrew. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm also, I'm feeling nostalgic with all these New Yorkers here. I'm, re, I'm a retiring, I'm, I'm a, uh, an ex-New Yorker. I'm an expat <laughs> from, the, from the bowels of Long Island. But anyway, I think the accent just came out. But um, good to meet you, Virginia. And how do I pronounce your name? Akpeni? Did I get that? Yes, you got it right. I got it right, wow. I'm I'm gonna pat myself on the back there. Um, Virginia, good to see you. Um, if anybody does have questions, look, I'm super excited about the project. Delmar is beyond excited about this project. Um, feel free to email him, you have his email. Or if you do, a, if you do the contact form um, in the ADAPT system, it goes to me. So uh, feel free to reach out and um, I'd be happy to um, answer any questions you might have. All right, that's all I've got to say. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you, um, you too. Yeah, thank I'm you. See you all again sometime. Take care. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone.